So this is gonna be a review of the Canon A1. It is a camera that I've had for quite some time. I would say the thing that I like about this camera the most is that I got it for free. Uh, my stepdad gave me this camera. Um, I did purchase this lens for it, but we're gonna talk about the camera today, not that lens. It is an amazingly capable camera. Now, it sat on my shelf for quite a while, kind of because of the lens. Um, I don't know what I did, but I jammed something in the lens and it wouldn't focus all the way to infinity. Therefore, I didn't shoot with it for quite a while. Um, actually, maybe a month or two back, I decided, you know what, that's just too um, nice and uh, it's just a pretty sweet little camera with a really nice lens on it. Um, I need to get that fixed so that I can go shoot it. I sent it in to Steve at Camera Clinic and he did just an amazing job. He, it, it's kind of dirty now, but when I got this back from him, it was like sparkly, shiny. Like it was just, it looked brand new. Except for the brassing, you know, and, and, and things like that, which, you know, kind of give it, you know, it's kind of a patina. Besides that, like the camera came back so squeaky clean, I was a little bit blown away. So I just want to give him a shout out. He did an amazing job. Um, one of the things with this camera is they tend to, the shutters tend to dry up and they're known for having like a squeaky, squeaky shutter. And it had a little bit of that going on. So I figured, you know, why not, you know, while he's got the camera or the, the lens, I, I sent the whole camera in and he took care of all that for me as well. So I've been shooting this camera a lot lately. It's been really, really fun to use. This lens opens up to like 1.2, so you can do some really, really creative stuff with that. But the camera itself is extremely capable. It's got just some amazing features on it for a camera um, of this level. I mean, just some of the features on here, you know, it's got a, right here, this flips out. It's got a depth of field preview button. Um, so that's gonna allow you to preview what, what the images are gonna look like if, you, if you're shooting at f8, f11, f16. If you wanna make sure that everything's in focus, you can do that. But the next one up is like an auto exposure lock. If you're shooting in this in any of the um, like aperture priority or shutter priority and you're metering off of something and you wanna expose for that but recompose, um, you can just hold this down. Like for instance, let me put it on yeah, so if I, I'm gonna put this in aperture priority, put it at like F4, and now if I meter onto this table, so right now I'm getting a 60th of a second at F4. If I meter in the light, it's just, it's it's telling me there's too much light at four to thousandths of a second. But if I take this and just hold this, so I meter off of here, go 60th of a second at F4, and then I wanna take a picture up there and keep that exposure, it, it holds that exposure. So it's an auto exposure lock button. And they call it something different, but that's what I've known it as. So that's a really um, cool feature to have on there. It is a little bit clunky to, like I use my, I think I was using my thumb and then this one to kind of focus and it worked out pretty good. Um, it is a fully manual focus camera, clearly. If you go up here, this is the, I think this is the on off switch. Um, on the top right here and then it's also a battery indicator light and it uses just a single um, cell battery behind this little grip and this is called the action grip and this just comes off and there's a little batter battery compartment right there then you have the film speed you know how you set the film speed there's a little tab here you press and you know if you're shooting 400 put it at 400 whatever whatever you want the meter to read that film as and then there's also exposure compensation. Um, it looks like up to two stops either direction. So that's really nice. You can shoot this in aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, program aperture priority mode. So if you have it um, set on shutter priority on the top here, then you go all the way up, there's a P. And if you have the lens set at auto or A, I'm assuming that's for auto, then you can pretty much, it will just meter and it'll change the f-stop and the shutter speed. You know, so it's, it's like a fully automatic camera at that point. 
and then if you want to go back down into the shutters you can then to go on fully manual you're going to want to keep it in shutter priority the tv on the top and just take the lens off and set your your f-stops on the lens and then you're going to be shooting in fully manual i have just been leaving it in aperture priority that's kind of how i like to shoot with this camera you know this is a camera that i want to go out and have fun with uh, i don't want to have to think um well, I shouldn't say that. I do want to have to think, but it is a camera that just, you know, you take it out and it should just work. It should be quick. It should be fast. I can definitely say that I've been able to rely on the meter in this. It hasn't, you know, done any weird, goofy things in, in even pretty difficult lighting. It's been really, really accurate. Um, the one thing I will say that I wish was improved upon was the shutter speed only goes up to one thousandth of a second. So I was shooting some Tri-X. Um, I was out at a park uh, with my daughter, uh, kind of along the lakeshore. And I had to stop down quite a bit to 5.6, F8. Um, and then when we were kind of in the shadows, I think I opened up to like 2.8. But so that was kind of an issue for me just because I'm really used to, I'm used to cameras going up to like 8 thousandth of a second. So. 1000 seems a little limiting. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just get an ND filter for the times that I do have 400 speed film in here and I'm out shooting in you know different environments like that. That way I'll have that uh, diversity. I can take it off if I, I need more, more speed. I can put it back on if, if the light is too bright. Um, I also did pick up a bunch of 100 speed film. So clearly that will help. But then if I go into a dim environment, I'm kind of being that most film I put in here is 36 exposures. I like to have that latitude to, to go between the two. Um, but I did shoot some Portra 160 while I was out there too, and those turned out really, really well. Most of the time when I'm shooting 35 millimeter, especially black and white film, I am doing it um, with the end goal in mind of being a lift print. Um, I just love lift printing um, from these style negatives. So I typically underexpose a little bit and overdevelop the film to give a really punchy negative. And then I go in the darkroom and do a lift print. And I will be going over um, a video in the future on lift printing and how I lift print, or at least how I've been lift printing lately, because there are so many different ways to, to kind of do it. So let's see what else this camera has. This little tab here so you can lock it so nothing happens and it's got a two second timer let's see if I can get it to work yeah so it's gonna flash and then two second timer 10 second timer Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 10 10 10 there we go um, 10 second timer then it's got another really cool feature. Like I said, the, it, the camera really doesn't have too much that you 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 would be um, hurting for or really wanting. But it also has a uh, double exposure. It's this little tab right here. So you, you you take one picture and then you push this in. And then when you if if you push that little little tab in, now if I advance this again, it's going to cock the shutter up but it's not gonna advance the film. So you can do double exposures really, really easy with this camera. Um, so that's really cool. It's got a little a counter here. Like I said, most of, the, most of the film that I've shot has turned out just amazing. So I would say this is just a fun, fun camera. And it was, it, it was one of those cameras where I, I probably would have never bought it, but the fact that you know, my, my stepfather gave me this camera, I'm, it's, it's really been one of my favorite cameras to use, at least lately. You can just grab and go, and, and you don't have to take a lot of time, you know, setting things up. And you know, it, it's kind of like you have large format, then you have medium format, which takes less time than large format. And then if you just want to go and create something really quick, you know, grab yourself this, grab yourself some Tri-X, some HP5, or you know, some really nice color film, and, and you can do some amazing stuff with this. So I also just recently did a, a a portrait shoot um, you know I shot a lot of digital pictures but I, I definitely broke this out I was shooting um, tri X no not tri X I was shooting HP 5 sorry and with again the goal to lift print these pictures um, was was what I intended to do with them um, the scans I'll, I'll throw some scans up on the screen they are a little bit 
like they're, they're a little bit grainy for if I was just doing a black and white portrait. Um, not terrible, but I did have the end goal in mind to lift print these. And I'll also throw um, a couple of lift prints up to show you. I probably should have um, exposed a little bit less and developed a little bit more on this film to give it a little bit more punch. But the lift printing is, is such a cool, lift printing is such a cool process that it just, it, it really, really works well. And I, I really like shooting HP5, a little underexposed and a little underdeveloped. And I get just a really, really good contrast. And the highlights kind of just start to glow. And you don't see a lot of that grain. The grain kind of stays in the shadow. And it, it and if you do, it's a real gritty, really kind of cool look. So, but for general, I like 400 speed film. Lift printing, it's a blast, love it. This camera is pretty darn cool. I would definitely recommend this to anybody who's looking to get into film photography into 35 millimeter. Um, you know, it's it, it's just a solid camera. They just don't build things like, like this anymore. You know, I, I think you can pick these up on eBay for 100 to 200 bucks. Um, you know, if you can get one cheap, get it cheap, send it in, get it get it adjusted. It's gonna it's gonna last you a long time. I, I can't be happier with this camera. I think it's um, really cool. I will point out a couple things that, and there's just a couple that, that could be improved. Like I don't think there's any way, like I said, this is a, a, a consumer level camera, I believe, when, when it was released. I don't really know. But I, I would assume just the fact that the prism, like you don't have any, you can't take this off, you know, and, and put any other type of, uh, prisms on here I don't think you can um, you know I don't think they make different focusing screens but the viewfinder and the focus is is nice and bright and things just pop into focus really really good um, so that's not really an issue this eye cup is kind of a pain in the butt I, I think that would be my biggest gripe with it in fact I might cut this or even pop it off and just not use it but I don't really want to go there um, but when you go to load film, when you close, see it, it, it stops right there. So it's, it's not like a total deal breaker, but it's just kind of, that's kind of dumb. Like, okay. So I don't like that about it. I think there's only one other thing is the shutter. Like when you push down, it's a little squishy. It's, you know, it's not, it, it's, I don't know how to describe it. Oh, there's two other things. Crap. It's a little, it just, it feels a little squishy on the shutter. I'm used to snappier. You know, I have a, a Canon, uh, the EOS 1V, and that's like, crack, 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 like super, super, like, it, it feels amazing when you when you click that shutter. Um, I'm not really comparing this to the EOS 1V, but that's one thing that, if, if I would improve upon this camera, it would be to have a, like, a, more of a, a snappier release on there. And then the other thing is when I advance the film, it, it just, it feels a little, uh, not as it could be. You know, I have, a, I have a Canonette and that advance just feels way better. And the other thing the Canonette has is it's got a, um, a really a quick load thing in here, which kind of grabs the film and you can just slap it over and, and, and you're, you're good to go. Um, this one doesn't have that, but I guess my point is, is the, the Canonette, the, the Advance, it just seems a little bit nicer for, for one reason or another. But I, I, like I said, I can't, I can't praise this camera enough for what it is. I, I'm, it's, it's kind of one of those things where this is the camera I look forward to going out and shooting, which is kind of odd, but I, I just, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And that's why I wanted to kind of bring it up on a, on a video. And yeah, that's, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, let me, let me know down below, like what's your favorite, like old school camera that someone given you for free? Like what I'm very intrigued. Cause I, I have a couple, I have a, like a Fujika. I have I've got a bunch of cameras that people have just given me. And I, I kind of look at them every once in a while. I'm like, Ooh, like that's neat. And this one, you know, being that it's a Canon and, and I went and picked up this lens, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite cameras that someone has given me. So until next time.